Well, Satan must be scraping the ice off his windshield right now because it's a cold day in hell, my friends. Action heroes Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sylvester Stallone, television actors Kelsey Grammer, Roseanne Barr, and Mayim Bialik, movie stars Minnie Driver and Seth Rogen, talk show host Bill Maher, film directors Eitan Cohen and Ivan Reitman, supermodel Kathy Ireland and singer Ziggy Marley, son of I shot the sheriff himself, have all just called Islam an ideology of hatred and genocide. And they might not even know that they did it. But that's what I'm here for. The Moral Reasoning Center of the Human Brain has a tendency to reverse polarity whenever the words Islam, Muhammad, or Quran are mentioned, especially if the brain in question happens to be located inside the head of someone in Hollywood. You can perform an experiment to verify this. Step one, walk up to some randomly selected Hollywood actors and say, hey, there's a guy over there who says that if your wife gets out of line, you can beat her into submission, and that it's okay to rape your war captives, and that Jews are the worst of creatures. Step two, observe the actors as their faces turn red with rage, smoke pours from their ears, and they proclaim it their new life's mission to stand against the shameful teachings of any man who promotes beating women, raping captives, and discriminating against Jews. Step three, inform the actors that the man teaching these things is Muhammad, and that you are simply describing what the Quran says in Surah 4, verse 34, Surah 4, verse 24, and Surah 98, verse 6, respectively. Step four, watch the actors go through what I call the five stages of Islamic delusion. First, denial. The Quran can't teach that, because I know Muslims who don't do that. Second, deflection. But other ideologies can be bad too. What about Westboro Baptist Church? Third, reinterpretation. Maybe what the Quran means when it says you can beat your wife into submission is that you should tickle her with a toothbrush. Fourth, justification. It was a different culture when the Quran was revealed, so I'm sure Muhammad had a perfectly good reason for all of this. Fifth, condemnation. You're a racist, hate-mongering, Islamophobic bigot for questioning the noble teachings of Muhammad. There's a pretty straightforward reason for this five-stage reaction. You see, most people in the West regard things like beating women or raping captives or racism as violations of moral absolutes. These things are unacceptable no matter what. But we're also taught that Islam... It's a wonderful religion that promotes all of the same moral values that we believe in. So when someone starts quoting the Quran, proving that Islam calls for the routine violation of moral absolutes, the Western mind gets all jumbled up. And when it can't reconcile everything it's required to believe, it erupts in anger at the source of the confusion, namely whoever pointed out what Islam actually teaches. Now, the four-step experiment I mentioned has just begun on a massive scale. The first two steps have been completed. Someone went to various entertainers and said, the terrorist group Hamas has some very violent statements in its charter. The entertainers were rightly enraged at Hamas's charter, and they signed a statement put out by the Creative Community for Peace, saying, we, the undersigned, are saddened by the devastating loss of life endured by Israelis and Palestinians in Gaza. We are pained by the suffering on both sides of the conflict and hope for a solution that brings peace to the region. While we stand firm in our commitment to peace and justice, we must also stand firm against ideologies of hatred and genocide, which are reflected in Hamas's charter, Article 7 of which reads, There is a Jew hiding behind me. Come on and kill him. There is a Jew hiding behind me. Come on and kill him. This is the example the Creative Community for Peace gives of an ideology of hatred and genocide. But where did this statement come from? Did Hamas invent it? No. All you have to do is read Article 7 of Hamas's charter to see that it's a quotation from Muhammad in Sahih Muslim 6985. We read... Allah's messenger said, the last hour would not come unless the Muslims will fight against the Jews and the Muslims would kill them until the Jews would hide themselves behind a stone or a tree and a stone or a tree would say, 
Muslim, there is a Jew behind me, come and kill him. According to Muhammad, the messenger of Allah, the last hour, the final judgment, won't come until Muslims slaughter Jews on an epic scale. Muhammad's message to his followers was, you want your virgins? Start killing Jews. But Muhammad, what if they hide? Don't worry, nature itself hates Jews. The rocks and trees will help you kill them. If anything qualifies as an ideology of hatred and genocide, this does. But the Hollywood community usually only accepts mindless conformity to the dogma that Islam is a religion of peace and tolerance. So even though actors and directors and musicians can recognize that an ideology promotes genocide when it's attributed to Hamas, it's going to be much more difficult for them to recognize that the exact same ideology is genocidal when it comes from Muhammad. So now, with this video, we're moving on to step three of our social experiment. We tell the actors that the ideology they just condemned when they heard it was being promoted by Hamas is a tenet of Islam itself. The people who signed the document, and there are already around 200, will either be consistent and say, well, if Islam teaches these things, then Islam is an ideology of hatred and genocide. Or they'll enter the five stages of Islamic delusion, denial, deflection, reinterpretation, justification, and condemnation. If they take the latter route, I'll once again be labeled a bigot and an Islamophobe for pointing out the obvious, namely that people immediately recognize how violent Muhammad's teachings are as long as they don't know that they're Muhammad's teachings. Based on experience, I suspect that Hollywood will choose the path of delusion. But who knows, maybe Rambo and the Terminator and Frasier and Amy Farrah Fowler will surprise us.